delighted to join you here remotely. Sorry, I could not be there in person. Uh, it's a wonderful event and uh, I am excited to talk about uh, this theme of uh, augmented personalized healthcare. How smart data with IOTs and AI is about to change uh, healthcare. I'm going to be able to share some um, uh, views from uh, ongoing research that we have and what we are learning in terms of how we can come up with uh, exciting uh, new ways to uh, achieve much better results in healthcare. Um, a broad outline here, I'll talk about uh, traditional healthcare versus what's changing now and how augmented uh, personalized health uh, care for uh, would help us uh, achieve healthcare of the future and what are the associated technical challenges and um, uh, share with you some uh, insights from ongoing applications. So uh, today um, uh, the healthcare is largely uh, clinic driven, a patient has a health challenge or health problem, uh, goes and sees a doctor and the doctor asks questions, things really change in the um, 19th century when uh, stethoscope was invented where the doctor could um, uh, for the first time uh, go beyond uh, what the patient has to see and listen to, listening to some signals from the patient. Along the way, the way healthcare system has developed is to is that the patient, the healthcare has been episodic. Something goes wrong with uh, you know a person, uh, a person seeks out medical care. Um, instead, uh, we are now looking at uh, constantly observing a patient's health and see what we can do about that and how we can keep uh, patient healthy all the time. Uh, also, the healthcare today is disease focused. Uh, something again, there is a symptom, and the patient goes to the doctor to uh, take care of the systems, and perhaps the doctor would try to see what are the underlying cause and then go about uh, solving that, addressing that problem. Uh, typically, it is disease driven, the whole medical coding system, everything is centered around the disease and disease classification and symptoms regarding the disease. Uh, but now we have the luxury to think about quality of life, uh, think about our um, health in a holistic way with uh, wellness and well-being uh, and uh, go beyond just the medical intervention on a sporadic episodic, episodic manner. Uh, much of the healthcare is today clinic centric uh, and now uh, and, 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 and how the clinical environment can deliver the healthcare. Um, now we are moving towards patient-centric uh, healthcare where patient is much more of a participant in the healthcare that they have. Uh, clinician control is being kind of um, uh, shared with the patient themselves being empowered and participating in their own health decision and management. Um, and um, we've been uh, essentially the current clinical care is based on limited type of an amount of data that's completely changing. You get, get your site uh, starting to see broad variety of multimodal data that are along the line of um, physical, uh, cyber, and social data, and personal, public, and population level data. Uh, one of the most exciting example of how the healthcare is changing is uh, here is this one, uh, Professor Larry Smar, a, a professor at UCSD, uh, put on the sense uh, you know was suffering from. Um, uh, some GI problem, gastrointestinal problem, and uh, he used a sensor to essentially self-diagnose uh, what's wrong with it. And he basically came up with uh, uh, a, a, a diagnosis that he has uh, irritable bowel syndrome or or, or um, um, other other disease of that kind. And that then he goes to the physicians and ask. Uh, decisions for how to mitigate uh, the, the, the health challenge that he's facing. So the patient here, Larry, uh, took charge of the situation uh, and, and indeed uh, was significant participant in deciding his own care. Um, um, now Larry, uh, of course, uh, is, a, is a highly educated, intelligent person and he can go and study the medical literature and make some of the uh, things, uh, make some decisions himself. Uh, we are now developing more intelligent systems powered by a variety of data and AI technologies such that those, the system can actually uh, help uh, uh, make some of the decisions or, or take care of some of the health challenges. 
Um, the couple of examples of interesting things happening out there, uh, Google uh, has a proprietary watch and uh, has uh, paired up with uh, Stanford and Duke and they are collecting through this watch a broad variety of uh, you know, Fitbit kind of data and more advanced kind of Fitbit data uh, combined by sleep data as well as some genomic data uh, that are collected by the participant clinics at Stanford and Duke. Uh, with all that data and a cohort of 10,000 patients, they are uh, trying to uh, gain a deep insight into uh, healthcare data and then uh, you know, understand about, uh, this more about the patient health. Another relatively futuristic act, you know, um, uh, effort is to kind of have uh, uh, kind of uh, advanced telemedicine kind of stuff uh, in your bathroom patient you know, and then if necessary uh, a, a kind of a car comes like uh, to patient with a lot more instrumentations built into that and then uh, collects uh, lots of information if necessary uh, involves uh, a clinician to deliver you a better um, uh, care. Now uh, we are interested in converting a broad variety of uh, uh, what we call as big data with volume variety uh, uh, and other challenges um, into smart data, one that uh, through contextual and personalized processing uh, can help patients and clinicians uh, make much better decisions, timely decisions for augmented personalized health. That we call that augmented, augmented personalized health. And the, that um, approach that we think about, we are thinking about, involves use of physical, cyber, and social data, something that I have talked about for a while. Um, and this is obtained through broad variety of means. It's not limited to just uh, a watch or just uh, uh, some clinical text test, but a lot more than that. Variable sensors and other internal things, mobile applications that can ask you contextually relevant questions driven by background knowledge and knowledge graph about the disease and other things. Electronic medical records and all the historical information, web-based information, a uh, lot of general knowledge on side effects and many other things, and social, even social media about what other patients feel and uh, do in the similar situations. Yeah, the data includes uh, traditional clinical data, patient-generated um, healthcare data, public health data, and so on and so forth. With all that data being available, um, uh, the challenge uh, becomes uh, data overload. So you have data, but um, data is of no value. What people are looking for is decisions and actions based on the data. So with vast amount of data, it's important that we figure out a way to convert that data into uh, something much more meaningful to that particular patient. And um, uh, in, in a particular context, uh, just taking the part of the data that relates to internal things or variables or sensors, uh, there are a whole bunch of challenges within this context. Given the limited time, I'm going to focus on the sensor data. So you have questions of about uh, sensor reliability and quality, sensor data heterogeneity, contextual interpretation of this data, and uh, converting this data into high-level abstractions that are meaningful for human understanding and decision making, and uh, you know meeting the personalized health and health objective, obje uh, personalized health objectives. Sensor data reliability, uh, uh, sensor data reliability and quality has been a big concern. Sometimes uh, the quality of data the sensors generate uh, have not been high, um, but there is increasing number of um, uh, uh, now indication, more, more and more indication. There was an MIT study of a large number of patients where they demonstrated uh, that um, uh, uh, the uh, variables were giving very meaningful data. In our own group, uh, we uh, used um, indoor air quality sensor uh, with respect to asthma management and uh, evaluated and demonstrated in this publication that indeed uh, these consumer grade uh, uh, sensors uh, are able to give high quality data that can be relevant to making health related decisions. Uh, and our work uh, usually happens in, the, in collaboration with clinicians. Uh, sensor data heterogeneity is a major challenge. There is a broad variety of data that um, we have to deal with and making sense of that data truly requires the use of semantic approach, uh, making uh, that data meaningful to the machines and AI algorithms that will process that data. And what we have to do is to convert data that is at a lower level. For example, 150. Well, what is 150? Well, that is 150 is uh, uh, is the data and information is that it is systolic blood pressure 
of 150 mmHg. That's a labeled data or annotated data. But that itself is of not much value. You need to understand that, oh, that number and that kind of um, information represents elevated blood pressure that requires medical attention. And from that, uh, elevated blood pressure at 150 could be hypertension level 1, it could be hyperthyroidism. So medical treatment can be only decided once you decide why there is an elevated pressure, blood pressure. So this is where you are going up the value chain of abstractions from data to high level uh, abstractions that can help you make health related decisions. That is a very important thing. We have developed a, uh, an environment for uh, semantic processing and for AI based environment uh, that uses background knowledge to convert this kind of data into something very meaningful up there. But much of that has to be done in a very personalized context. A lot of, uh, you know, anybody can read medical protocol online, but you need uh, clinicians to make the decision. Most of, most of the time, clinician is looking at the contextual information for that patient. What are the objectives from that um, patient who has chronic heart patients may never had a normal blood pressure. A patient who is uh, 40 years uh, old and has no other problem should be, you know, uh, just uh, this high blood pressure. Then in that case, uh, he should be treated differently. So all this data needs to be contextualized and personalized. Typically, it is very important to have relevant knowledge uh, for, in this case, medical knowledge, clinical knowledge to help you convert this data into abstractions that help you make decisions. So this is a broad um, approach, uh, this is the core of the approach, this is the outline of the approach that we call smart data for healthcare. And um, in our case, uh, we have developed a framework called K-Health and it is, it is being applied to a variety of situations, asthma management, variety of surgery pati uh, patients and now we are working on obese patients also. There is a video online. I don't have to, talk, you know, time to uh, uh, to do that. But that video shows you a um, uh, shows you uh, the uh, the application we have developed for asthma. Um, so the slides are available online, and you can check out this video. But convert. You have to take all this kind of data that I talked about, and come up with a um, uh, computational infrastructure that, for example, would do analyze this data, come up with a risk model, and uh, help you make personalized, uh, you know, action. Uh, so take medication before you go to the what, or in some case contact the doctor and get additional help. Um, uh, or there is a higher pollen outside, and you need to take uh, your short-acting medication, uh, Saba, uh, to to prevent from the allergy-related uh, asthma onset. Uh, in doing all that, you um, would uh, use uh, current practice uh, medical knowledge. So, for example, this is a medical knowledge with regards to how well control is your asthma and, um, uh, uh, and what kind of medications are or therapies appropriate for the level of asthma control that you have and you seek. Uh, that knowledge is constantly there to make the data that you collect meaningful. And then from that, uh, you have um, a variety of uh, high level abstractions. What is the propensity towards asthma? What is your exposure level over the day? Uh, what is the wheezing level? All that kind of stuff that go beyond data to high level of uh, information. And from that, to try and come up with uh, actually a deeper understanding of the situation. For example, there is a lot of, um, um, you know, you keep the window open, there is a lot of carbon monoxide coming up, and that is actually affecting uh, uh, asthma at the night. This kind of deeper understanding of the environment, of the data that surrounds the patient is a is, is challenging thing that we want to do and that we are doing. In our asthma uh, K-Health um, uh, project uh, for asthma, we are able to take all that kind of data and then make it you know, um, easy to analyze and visualize. So from this um, kind of a dashboard uh, where all variety of data gets put up, what are the data that are out of bound or unusual data that you have, all those data can make you uh, can make it easier for you to find uh, some correlations. In this case, uh, activity limitation observed with high pollen activity, uh, high, high pollen count outside, uh, low excel nitric oxide observed with uh, absence of coughing, uh, medication uh, use of medication leads to decreasing excel nitric oxide. Uh, activity limitation uh, is likely related to high excel uh, nitric oxide. All these kind of um, correlations can be found. And uh, then the, you can go one step further and uh, use this data to come up with, to, 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 to create a risk model, to create a prediction model. So you could potentially, you, you, we are using currently applying logistic uh, regression 
uh, to uh, uh, help us come up with uh, outcome prediction. And based on that, uh, you know, come up with patients, uh, uh, you know, how well, uh, these two issues. One is that uh, how well controlled is your asthma? And you want to present that in a very simple form. And uh, what, what, how vulnerable you are? What is happening surrounding you? That could lead to an adverse event uh, with regards to your health. And, and then, uh, corresponding to that, uh, if there is a medical protocol, then the system can help you better uh, manage the medical protocol even without uh, taking a new medical uh, information. If necessary, you may have to go to still uh, clinician or ask clinician. My time is short, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to mention that we also work with bariatric surgery patients and uh, there are a whole bunch of and obesity related issues, there are a whole bunch of issues uh, and challenges with regards to that application also. I won't talk about that today in the context of uh, bariatric surgery patients. Uh, we are uh, developing a system that can monitor uh, for patient continuously, uh, that can identify non-compliance um, uh, after the surgery and improve the self-management, uh, uh, meaning better compliance and improve the outcome uh, and reduce the recidivism that could lead to again getting back the uh, weight uh, of the patient. So. Um, uh, how do we uh, solve the problems with the real complexity, um, with all that data and uh, diverse knowledge, um, uh, and come with intelligent decision? And for that, we developed a, uh, a more um, uh, detailed framework we call semantic cognitive perceptual computing. Semantic computing, cognitive computing, and perceptual computing. And um, there is a uh, paper uh, that discusses that in detail. And here, for example, a um, uh, a combination of semantic computing that makes data more meaningful, cognitive computing that takes a lot of historical and other information, uh, medical knowledge to better contextually understand the data, and, uh, uh, and perceptual computing that makes the, takes us up this value chain of abstraction and make that data actionable. And that you can see here uh, going from health data all the way to health condition insights and treatment, uh, that kind of framework is what we have outlined and are uh, going uh, or go, uh, and going forward with to implement uh, this uh, augmented uh, personalized health uh, approach. So with that, let me uh, you know kind of uh, then uh, we have a large group and a number of students and colleagues uh, are working with me on this project. I want to acknowledge them. Um, and um, uh, while I'm not able to uh, take your question uh, in real time because I'm not in person. Uh, feel free to uh, email me a question and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have in this regards. Thank you.